Metroid Other M was one title I was really looking forward to this year. The fact that it was putting more of an emphasis on Samus' backstory really got me intrigued, as when I think about it, my favourite games of all time have really excellent narratives. However, many Metroid fans weren't too happy with the fact that Nintendo were taking a back seat with this one and letting Team Ninja create the game. There has never been a bad Metroid game, so no pressure on the guys behind Ninja Gaiden. First, let's look at the story. Any objections, lady? The thumbs up sign had been used by the Galactic Federation for ages. Me? I was known for giving the thumbs down during briefing. Before playing this, I recommend familiarity with the Metroid series plot, as the game's opening scene takes us where Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo ends. Samus defeats Mother Brain, and Metroids are now wiped out from the galaxy. She receives a distress call from a wayward space station, only to find the place swarm with monsters out to kill. Dead space anyone? She eventually meets up with soldiers from the Galactic Federation, and her former commander, Adam Malkovich. What has some fans upset is that Samus takes orders from Adam, and many have initially perceived Samus as a rogue tough as nails bounty hunter that listens to no one. Whilst this seems prominent in the game's many flashbacks, and believe me, there's a few, Samus does exactly what Adam says, and even goes as far as allowing Adam to forbid Samus from using her equipment. I'm also going to have to ask that you follow my commands. You don't move unless I say so, and you don't fire until I say so. This makes sense as this seems like a more believable way of acquiring new upgrades as you progress through the game, but it also makes Adam seem like a douche. For example, there's a part in the game where you're making your way through a lava pit, and it's only after you've been slowly having your health drain for 15 minutes, Adam finally gives Samus permission to use her heat resistant suit. What an asshole! Now to the voice acting, and it's hard to judge. The voice actress who plays Samus has done a fine job, but she's been given direction to sound rather monotonous. Plus, there's very complicated sentences like this one. It touched me on some level that Adam would acknowledge that past by calling me something delicate, like lady. I mean, who talks like that? I just think the writers were trying too hard with this one. Also, 90% of the time Samus speaks, she does so in monologues. This would make sense during the flashbacks, but she also monologues about what we're currently seeing, which makes doing so rather redundant. Okay, Samus. Everything's normal. I awoke to the familiar voice of a quarantine officer. We know, we just saw him wake you up. I mean, God. Samus monologues so much in this game, you could watch all the cutscenes with your eyes closed and pretend you're listening to an audiobook. Although, after I spent time with the game, I did become more accustomed to her character. The script is pretty poorly written, and this may be thanks to a poor Japanese translation. If you can understand Japanese, then perhaps playing the imported version might be a better idea. But as far as story goes, it's entertaining. The game has a few interesting plot twists, and the CG cutscenes are beautiful to watch. The story is quite a strong element of the game, and since you can't skip cutscenes on your first playthrough, I say be prepared for one. But it is entertaining, and goofy in some places. For example, I love the directing style this sequence brought to other end. Well then, Lyle, investigate Sector 1, and show a little restraint with the explosives. Gotcha. Maurice. You cover Sector 2. Repair any equipment you come across. Affirmative. Anthony, you're Sector 3. I'll leave it to you to decide whether plasma guns are called for. All right, James. It's like something you'd see in an episode of Power Rangers. It's a shame other parts of the game don't feel like this, though. KG, run a complete sweep of the residential quarters and investigate any trace of survivors. Other M is a 3D side-scroller. Didn't know they could exist, but here we are. You only use one Wiimote here. Is it just me, or is it a little ironic that a game company called Team Ninja decided not to use the nunchuck? Strange. Moving with the D-pad is not nearly as bad as I thought it would be, and shooting in third person is a breeze thanks to your laser blast being directed automatically. Shooting stuff is a lot of fun, but avoiding stuff isn't in my opinion. You dodge incoming attacks with a directional tap on the D-pad, and because the D-pad is used for moving, it becomes awkward to use if you're moving and you want to dodge at the same time. 
Most of the time it works, but when it doesn't, it gets very frustrating, especially when you're underwater, since here you move incredibly slowly. Pointing the Wiimote at your TV screen will snap your view into first person mode, Metro Prime style. You can't move whilst in this mode, but I guess the game was designed with this in mind. Your missiles can only be fired from a first person perspective, and they are your most powerful weapon. So if you could move whilst in first person, then there'd be no reason to go around in third. During the game's more difficult battles, snapping in and out of the two viewpoints can lead to some intense gameplay. One problem I had a lot with this game was figuring out where to go. Sometimes you're forced into a first person mode and you have to discover something before you can move on. I ended up getting stuck for several minutes on these sections, I had no idea what to look for. There are also walls which can be blown up to reveal passageways you can fit in with your morph ball. The trouble is, is that where these walls can be blown up is sometimes not clear. This wall, for example, can be blown up here. Can you see a crack? I had to look at a playthrough on YouTube to discover that this wall needs a bomb to get through. So whilst the gameplay is flawed in places, it's still a lot of fun. I was surprised by how well a single Wii mode can work, although perhaps the inclusion of the nunchuck could have worked in the game's favour. The camera does a great job in keeping up with Samus and showing you what you need to see, but it's a shame it wasn't changed to a more of a top-down view during the game's 3D expansions. This is because it's sometimes hard to judge depth with some platforming sections, and also when you can jump on enemies for special attacks. Plus you have no control of the camera, so if you're backtracking through an area, you won't see what's in front of you. It's not as bad as it sounds, but it is a problem. The boss battles stood out for me as the highlights of the game. They can get especially intense, and because there's a plethora of save points and checkpoints in the game, you'll hardly ever have to repeat any areas you've been to, so you will get frustrated if you die. Now I could be wrong with this, but I'm going to say it. This is the best looking Wii game I've ever seen. The environments are beautifully detailed, energy weapon effects are cool, and moments like this are especially cool to watch. Of course you have to remember that this is the Wii you're playing with, and some textures are a little blurry, but that's unavoidable. You also have to remember the lavish CG cutscenes, which have been beautifully rendered, and each one is a treat to watch. The soundtrack is also brilliant, making this release still feel religiously like a Metroid game. It's a presentational treat throughout. The victim hadn't sustained the same injuries. The dead I'd seen had been torn apart by something large. This one had been attacked by a different type of creature. And as I studied the violence this creature had wrought, I felt something in the air. The presence of a dark intelligence. Whilst Over M is not without its flaws, I still really enjoy playing it. The story is not quite as compelling or well acted as games like Metal Gear Solid or Uncharted, but it does its job. The gameplay is a lot of fun, but pacing issues like not being able to figure out what to do next and the contrived dodge system diminished the experience for me, but it did not ruin it. And on a presentational level, Other M just looks and sounds incredible. Other M isn't exactly a short game, but it could be longer, docking in at around 9 to 10 hours. But there is incentive to play again if you want to grab all the upgrades you can find. I really liked Other M. It's different, entertaining, and beautiful to look at, and that's why I'm giving it a very high worthy of owning rating, falling just short of a full price game. It's not without its flaws, but the overall enjoyable experience overcomes the game's shortcomings. Long term Metroid fans may not be pleased with some of the game's new experimental features, but I welcome them, and I think you should too. It's a Metroid game like no other, and it's an engaging experience from start to finish. I altered the course of my ship as if this detour had already been part of my flight plan. Babies cry. It was as though it was crying specifically for me.